As I said, we're coming already. It's good to see you got your Bibles out there. You gotta get up early, I'm sure. Mark chapter 16. Verses 15 to 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. It doesn't say they might. It says they will recover. So Jesus final command, the final words that he speaks to his disciples is go and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew 28 verse 19 says to go and make disciples of all nations. That's Matthew's version of what his interpretation of what Jesus said. You'll find the same in all of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus has been crucified, placed in a tomb, raised in three days. Jesus had told the disciples to go to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And he met them there and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And that authority was given by his heavenly Father, God himself. And after his commands to the disciples were told, he was received into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus left his disciples with some very powerful words. Go and preach. And go and make disciples in all the world. Now it's one thing to be told what to do. And then the scripture says, and they went and preached everywhere. I find it so encouraging that the disciples responded so quickly to what Jesus had instructed them to do. When he told them to go, it says they went and preached everywhere. Famous last words. I want to share a few of famous last words with you. <clears throat> we usually think of last words as being said more like, I love you. Has anyone told anyone that this morning? Oh, good, good. Or, see you later. Or, take care of yourself. Those words being said, when, when you expect to see someone again, though, those aren't really meant to be last words, but you want them to, to know that you want to see them again. Just thinking of people's last words. Many of you might remember Lou Gehrig saying when he left baseball, I consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Anyone here feel that way? But you're not a man. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was bad. That was really bad. One even more popular, or one even more people would probably remember is General Douglas MacArthur. What, is, what did he say? I shall return. I shall return. Here's one out of the scripture. The Apostle Paul said this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And I'm thinking of one individual that will be watching this later on on video. 
but she's she is always quoting scripture every time I think of her and every time well every time that I talk with her scripture is coming out of her mouth and I can imagine this one being one of them I have fit I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith Jesus spoke his words to the disciples, and I'm sure they were received well because it says in Mark 16, 20, and they went. And just in case you're not sure what that word disciple means, if you have asked Christ to come into your heart, you become a disciple of his. Simply put, a disciple is a follower of of that individual. As a Christian, you are a Christ follower. You want to be like. You want to act like. You want to walk like. You want to talk like. You can say you are an ambassador of His because you represent Him wherever you are. Now, I don't want to surprise you, but as a disciple, those words that Jesus spoke over 2,000 years ago, I believe those words are meant for you also. I believe it was meant for the disciples throughout all of time. I want to elaborate on this word disciple just a little. As a disciple of Christ, we hear his teachings and then put them into action. We talk like him, we act like him, we walk like him, and as we look at scripture, we see what his mission was here on earth. Jesus said as he ate with Zacchaeus, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Therefore, that should be our mission also. Reaching out to others. We want to see people come to know the Lord. We want them to accept Him as, his, as their personal Savior. We call these last words of Jesus the Great Commission. And it is great. And it may seem like Jesus is telling us to do something impossible. And with that in mind, I'm going to give you some words first that just might discourage you. And you know I don't like to discourage anyone. I want to encourage people. But first, I want to give you some words I just want you to go with me for a moment. Studies show that 42% of the world's population will, will be born, live, and die without ever meeting a Christian. Pretty incredible, isn't it? 42%. There are between six and 7,000 people groups around the world who we consider to be unreached. And that term defined is a group of people that less than 2% of that population has ever heard anything about Christ. About 1,500 of these people groups have absolutely no access to the gospel. So when I said it seems like he's giving us an impossible task, we need to do our part. Each and every one of us must do our part. I was reading a story, a missionary had met a woman in Tanzania a few years ago that brought this reality home to him. He says, we were traveling in the bush in the National Geographic area, or Africa, when we saw this woman walking along the side of the road carrying her sick baby. 
So we pulled our vehicles to the side of the dirt road and the local tribesmen encouraged, engaged her in conversation. As the team engaged her in this conversation and asked to pray for her, I heard them say through the translator, we would like to introduce you to Jesus. <clears throat> her eyes got big. Big smile spread across her face. I would love to meet him. I will be back in my village this afternoon. Please bring him by. I will make some tea. For this missionary, it became a very sobering fact, or a sobering moment for him. It was the first time he said I had ever met a person who literally had zero idea who Jesus was. She had never even heard the name. And yet this story is repeated time after time again. Pretty amazing. We in America can't even begin to imagine the thought that nobody has heard, that there's somebody in the world that hasn't heard the name Jesus. A couple things that some Christians, when they hear, go into all the world and preach, think of it kind of scary. <coughs> and that word preach scares a lot of people to death. Anyone here? <laughs> the scary portion is that word preach. Go into all the world and preach. People instantly say, but I'm not a preacher. And then it says, go and make disciples. But I don't know how. I've told you many times that all of us are ministers of the gospel. All of us are preachers of the gospel, one way or another. It's just the concept of being a preacher that most of us have. Most people's concept of a preacher is what you see me doing on Sunday mornings. But your lifestyle is preaching a sermon. Uh oh. Boy, good okay, boy. How you live your life. Do people see Christ in you? common comment people make to me from, from time to time is wow you have to change your hats a lot you have to take off your preacher hat and put on your business hat you have to take off your business hat and put on another hat my husband hat but my life as a business person and my life as a pastor and my life as a husband, you don't change hats. It's the same hat that stays on. We are the same people. You still need to reflect Christ in everything that you do, in whatever thing that you are doing. Your work, your school, your shopping, your interacting with others, your recreation. That's one way that you have to preach the gospel is your life and your life example. The second thing that scares Christians is to go into all the world part. That's not me. I'm not a traveler. I'm not going to go to Africa. I can't do that. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. We are to spread the gospel around the world 
but starting right here at home. Jerusalem is in reference to your home base. That's what it means when it says Jerusalem. It's right here at home. The people that you see all the time, you want them to see Christ in you. Now, do you remember the story of Moses? How God said, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to set my people free. And do you remember his response? Moses said, I can't. God, you know I can't talk very good. No way. He said, send Aaron. Now, if you don't know who Aaron is, Aaron was his brother. Moses said, I can't do that. Don't send me, send Aaron. In other words, send somebody else to go talk to Pharaoh. And I'll just liken that to this. It's like somebody walking up to Lauren saying, I want you to go talk to President Joe Biden. Now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should have picked a different president. <laughs> In other words, most of us would be dumbfounded that most of us would not even begin to think of going in to talk to the President of the United States. That, that really is my point, okay? <laughs> Moses also said, Pharaoh won't listen to me. I want you to remember that phrase because we have all said that at one point or another. I can't talk to them because they won't listen to me. They're going to argue with me. So remember this later on. Just as we feel going into all the world is impossible, even just speaking to someone about God may seem impossible. So now, here's the encouraging words. <clears throat> words that should excite every Christian. When Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, which is found in Mark 16, 15, or 18, 15. I had to get close enough for my glasses to read that number better. And in Matthew 28, 19, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. We have no need to worry about anything. No need to worry about what to say or how to say it. Because Jesus said, I am with you always. Every circumstance you put yourself in, that you get into, he said, I am with you always. To me, that is so exciting knowing that whatever difficulty I am in, no matter what hard of a time I am having in something in life, He is with me always. But another, and Mark really stands out to me. Let me say this first. If you're a Christian, this is what you can expect to see happening in your life as you step out and do what Jesus said. Here it is. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. When you speak to somebody about God, you can speak with confidence. When God impresses on your heart to go talk to somebody, you can rest assured that God has already gone before you. He has already prepared that heart to hear His Word. When you pray, and in your daily life, expect great things from God. Don't be afraid to attempt great things for God. Someone said, when God said go, and we go, 
that person is God's man in God's place doing God's work in God's way for God's glory. Wow. A missionary by the name of Hudson Taylor said this. He was one of the early missionaries, I believe, in China back in the early 1900s. He said, we do not go in our own strength. When God calls his servants, he equips them and provides all that they need to accomplish his eternal purpose. God's work done in God's way will receive God's supply. I would rather to have dreamed big and failed than to sit and do absolutely nothing. So my question for you today is this. What would you do for Christ if you knew you could not fail? I want you to think about that for a moment. What would you do for Christ if you knew you could not fail? Advertise. <laughs> so another encouraging word for you. And I like how the scripture ends in Mark 16. And he went, or and they went, and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. So when you go out, when you walk down the street, when you're talking to somebody in the grocery store, when you're sitting in a class in school, when you're working in your place of business, God will go with you wherever you go. Allow him to use you in whatever situation you're in. Amen. 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 So I want us to go back to that last question. What would you do for Christ if you knew you could not fail? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're an awesome God. And I am so encouraged from these scriptures here that we looked at this morning. Not only encouraged, but excited for what's to come in the future. And I pray that we ponder these scriptures. And think, Lord, what would you have us to do what would you have each and every one of us to do in your work? I thank you for that, Lord. Amen.